what's going to be How's It Hanging, How's It Happen. You guys know this is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast. The podcast Rolling Stone said initiates profound discussions with rock and metal artists, allowing fans to discover the creative workflow of their favorite musicians and understand the factors that make the band succeed or fall from fame. We are also sponsored by Dark Fusion Systems, the best for your custom computing needs. Get a hundred off your entire blues code CPPOD at Dark Fusion Systems. The kind of link is dropped in that link description of the podcast below. Now, Let's go to a band that's been around for over 30 years, bringing out their ninth album. That's right. We have Mushroom Head on the podcast today. Skinny is with us to talk about the brand new album, Call the Devil, which comes out on August 9th. We go into the album, the most exciting song they're ready to play live, the expansive nature of this album, and why they're continuing to evolve over and over again as time goes on. And now... Going into 2024 with this brand new album, or say ready to go to 2025 with this brand new album, the excitement of creativity that's about to come from them. <gasps> oh boy, you guys ready? Let's go! Yeah! Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast, 30 years this band has been around, kicking ass, taking names, and absolutely melting your faces with some of the best metal out there. And in 2024, a brand new album is coming away called Call the Devil, coming out on August 9th. And if you are a fan of heavy music, if you want to get in the pit and go absolutely nuts, you're going to want to check out this band live when they're playing over in Europe to support the release of this or in October over here in the States as well. So please, let's welcome Skinny from the band Mushroom Head of the Podcast. So Skinny, welcome to Core Progression Podcast. Hey, what's up, man? Thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview and spreading the word. Dude, absolutely my pleasure. And I got to jump in right away. So your last album, Wonderful Life, coming out in 2020, that was during one of the weirdest times we've ever had in the history of the world with the coronavirus pandemic. Not able to go out and tour with it. But now you've got a brand new coming out and you guys are hitting the road right away with it. So what's it like going into this album compared to the last one, given the fact that you can have the full on release that you really want to give this album so people can just enjoy it fully? Yeah, absolutely. I think you, you nailed it right there. You know, with COVID happening in the same time as that release, it was, you know, really heartbreaking. Ultimately, we weren't able to get out there and perform any of this new material that we had worked on for the last year, year and a half, you know, and thinking that, yeah, this would be a great live song and this would be really fun to do live, you know, and all that obviously got, you know, yanked out from underneath us. You know, we weren't special. Everyone got, you know, treated pretty much the same way there. Found out real fast that uh, heavy metal drums were not essential. And uh, it was just a hard one to swallow. But so once this album was prepared, even when we were writing it, we were there was so much excitement knowing that the world is turning back on and we're going to actually get a chance to, you know, do this again and get out there and perform brand new material, not just sitting on the album that we didn't get to perform. Now, you probably will hear some songs from A Wonderful Life on this next set of touring, but um, it's just so exciting as an artist to get out there and perform brand new material, especially after 30 years. And that's one thing I'm really interested in, too, because you've been doing this for so long, you know, 30 plus years. I mean, the band was formed the year before I was born. So you guys have been around my whole entire life, which is absolutely insane to say. But the fact that you still have the like energy and the passion and just that giddiness of a kid to go and play brand new music after 30 years, it speaks to you guys as musicians, but speaks to you guys as as the band overall as just lovers of music and just want to give the best thing possible and enjoy life to the fullest, especially when the album drops on August 9th. I mean, you guys are opening up this whole entire album cycle once it's released, playing in Germany. And when it comes to metal, is there a better place to open up an album cycle than playing in Germany? Absolutely. We're really looking forward to it. And it's great that you mentioned that because we've never actually done it in another country. I think every album release has always been the state. So this is a first for us, even, you know, 30 years later. So we're hoping this one does really well and is received, you know, and people like it as much as we do. Well, if you're going to go anywhere to open up, especially outside the States, why not Germany? And just with the metal pedigree that they have, plus anytime you see just these manic shows and these manic concerts, especially manic mosh pits, I'm always looking at videos like, oh, where was this filmed? Typically in Germany. So you expecting some absolute craziness on this first show with the new album, which I'm hoping you are. And how are you going to handle something like this? Even though you are a 30 year professional, so it makes sense that it should be pretty easy, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's it's never easy. You still get butterflies, you know. You don't. You just want to put on the best performance possible. Doesn't matter if it's a five hundred seater or five thousand or fifty thousand. You know, you still 
well, especially once you get the mask on, you, be, you you take on another character, you get into your own mind and your own performance mode, and you, you don't really think about it until you take that mask back off and go, oh, wow, okay. It, it, it's it's pretty cool to, again, just immerse yourself into the performance. And um, again, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's a 500-seater or 50,000, man. We, we really get out there and you know, give it our all just because, you know, we, we still, after all these years, just have a passion for the craft. I mean, if you didn't have a passion for the craft after all these years, then what would be the point of it? There are plenty of bands out there that have just have want the passion for the craft that have it, that want to show up, but you got to still be able to have that longevity and have that creative flow that's going to keep people coming back for more, whether it is a 500 seat venue, five. 5,000, even a 50,000 capacity festival, but you guys keep bringing people out because the music is just something that people want to get into. People want to listen to. They see the performance and it's more than just, especially with the mask, more than just a band up on stage playing. It's an actual immersive experience where at times it's like, who are these guys? Do we really know exactly who they are? But we just have a blast with it and we get to really enjoy it. Myself, I have not had the pleasure yet of seeing Mushroom Head live, but you guys are coming around to me in October. So I'm pretty sure that this is going to happen. And if I leave the show and I'm anything less than thrilled, then I have failed in the pit as a person. No, I, I think you'll really enjoy the like the new lineup and the current sets, you know, and the songs that we're playing. It's there's a, the shows are just full of hot, just very high energy, a lot of crowd participation. And um, again, man, we're really excited to play some of this new stuff and see how how it plays out you know like literally we haven't played a note of any of this stuff live yet so we're really excited all right let me ask you this then out of all the songs off of call the devil which one are you most excited to play live i know there's 13 of them on there there's got to be one that just stands out as the one i cannot wait to perform live which one is that and why the the more i listen to it now that it's complete it's got to be track one eye to eye it is uh it just slaps you in the face it's got super high energy it's it's kind of pissed off the whole time it's it's very aggressive but it just has a bounce to it that makes you want to bounce your head and you know you can just i can picture a crowd you know reacting and the mosh pit just going fucking ape shit I can already imagine that as well, too, because I listened to it right away. Right when it started, I'm just thinking this has to be a song either you guys are going to open with or is going to come a point in time where the crowd is going to be the absolute most nuts because it does have that like a consistent electronic industrial feel. But the overall energy behind it, especially with some of that new metal snap on the snare drum that is consistent throughout it, it keeps that energy, it keeps that bounce going and it keeps that just flow of we just want to have a great time. And especially in the pit, we want to hit somebody and we're just gonna have fun doing it but it's also the vocals just the different styles of vocals that play off in this song they really help with the instrumentals to stand out even more to really amplify the energy and that pissed off feeling that this song has so especially when fans listen to it for the first time on the album on release day it's gonna be something that's gonna blow them away in my mind and now see potentially seeing it live that's gonna be something i don't want to miss just due to the fact that it is probably the song on this album where I'm like, I got to see this live. And if I don't, well, then again, I have failed as a human. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're definitely having a hard time picking, you know, what to play. This being album number nine, if you took two songs off of every record, you're at 18 songs already in the set an hour and a half long. You know, I think we're only playing like 60 or 70 minutes. So it's going to be tough to try to figure out which ones are going to make it. You know, I, I can see maybe two set lists coming into play here. We'll, we'll see. I'd be curious to see what you guys could do with two set lists, just given the fact of the nine album discography that you have. But the fact that especially only have 60, 70 minutes, there's going to be songs that people really want to see, people really want to hear. And if they don't hear them on one night, well, hopefully they're close enough to go and see you again the next night so they can see both sets because there's going to be some repeats in there, especially with the new album. You want to play certain songs off of it, but there's going to be a chance you guys can really formulate, you know, set list a set list b and just alternate each night give people a different experience or someone like myself who lives in the upper midwest you come to milwaukee perfect i can see a show there and absolutely hit it then i think the day beforehand you guys are in illinois right around the chicago area if i want to see a show that night too i could see it see two completely different sets and essentially have two completely different like tours in one two like one weekend how cool is that yeah 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're throwing around a lot of those those ideas. And, you know, just like to give you an example, we're doing the Incarceration Festival on Friday and we have a half hour uh, to, to do our performance. So we're really we have no idea which ones we're playing yet because it's just really tough to pick when it gets down to a half hour. You're like, All right, well, what do you do? So, um, yeah, anyone who's coming to Incarceration, you'll be just as surprised as we are. <laughs> Now I really wish I was going to incarceration, but unfortunately, uh, money became a thing of a problem and I couldn't make it out this year. So not too happy about that because I totally would have been like, I got to see what you guys do live, especially after checking out this album. Even if you guys are just playing everything else early, I'm like, I got to see what this is live and then see what happens when the album comes out. Like, I don't want to miss out on any of this, man. Yeah, no worries, man. We'll make sure to catch you in the fall. Oh, I know you're going to for sure. One other thing that I absolutely loved, especially going into this album, was when there was that mixture between male and female vocals, because I've seen a lot of times where you have a mix, where bands have a mixture of male and female vocals. And of course, they're very prominent out there, but it seems like sometimes it's just that split is forced a little bit too much. Every time you guys brought in a female vocalist to really amplify certain sections of these songs, it was the absolute perfect time to put them in because it showed more of a contrast in the songs to really bring the heaviness out of them, but also in some symphonic elements to really let them expand and just be a lot more vast than what you potentially think they would be. So really bringing that all into the fold, I think is an absolute highlight on this album. So when it came to writing it, especially balancing multiple different vocalists, how was that all done? You know, I mean, a lot of that is, is experimental for sure. And, you know, we just kind of let, you know the best stuff so to speak rise to the top after you know you, you you sit and absorb it after you record it for a little while you may have other like the the jackie and steve or jackie and scott switch their harmony spots you know after hearing it play back and say hey how about you guys take each other's spot and let's let's hear that sometimes it's a blend of of that happening and, and fading in and out of each other so there's a lot of experimenting and uh you know uh, time taken to uh try to make those layers and textures work together so um they complement as well as contrast um you know we we try to get that haunting beauty in in all of it when we do it that's a pretty good way to describe it honestly is that haunting beauty because when jackie does come in there it adds just that whole different layer it can be haunting at times it can be powerful at times but it's just that massive contrast, whether it's between Steve or Scott, doesn't matter who. It just absolutely brings it out in a completely different light. But it allows you guys to expand so much more on these different sounds. Because as you go through the album, yes, we get songs like Eye to Eye and A Single Fall in Line that are going to have that faster, heavier, groovier pace to it. But there are certain songs later on in the album that aren't necessarily as full force. But it allows that vocal style, especially from Jackie, to create that haunting feel. And the experimentation of sometimes trying different, you know, different patterns than expected. It, it makes this album sound a lot more fully complete and much more expansive than some other albums I've been seeing this year where they stay in one singular lane and they never deviate. Yeah. You know, some of that's our own ADD, I guess, but <laughs> it, it comes back to the, the way we record, you know, it's kind of how we live life. We don't always watch horror movies. We don't always watch comedy. You know, it's a little bit of all of it mixed together. Um, we're not always happy. We're not always sad. So those real emotions come out when we're recording and, you know, some of that stuff turns really dark and doomy and some of it's very high energy and almost positive and upbeat. But, um, you know, ultimately, I think, you know, blending that all together cohesively um, creates the mushroom head sound. And then obviously adding the big vocal dynamics again, you know, uh, with the with the addition of scott and his clean vocal steve's clean vocal and then jackie um there's the, just a lot of experimenting going on and you know some of the things we looked at on the on this record um a little more like dark art and uh hell hallucination and shame in a basket those are looked at almost more like uh theater or opera and if they're if you look at the songs the way they're they're not traditionally arranged as a song, so to speak. So they're set more in acts almost. If you look at act one, two, and three of the parts, that's why some of the songs get long and uh, again, very experimental. And sometimes it just, it, we don't know where it's going to take us. And if we stay away from our traditional thought then, and just let it breathe, sometimes it, it just becomes really unique and it, it 
it evolves all on its own. And those two songs are an example of really experimenting and, uh, you know, seeing what we're seeing what we can do. And it, it's really fun when you don't know where the song is headed instead of going, no, it has to sound like this. It has to sound like this. We're like, I don't know where this thing's going, but man, is it interesting. So keep going. So, um, you know, again, huge appreciation for uh, the art, the craft, and just uh, the opportunity to experiment like that. And I think especially when you look at a lot of bands that are really bringing heavy music much more back into the mainstream, those are the ones that are trying so many different things to really grow the sound, but just see where it potentially goes and not just stay in that one singular lane and go forward with it. And it all helps with you know, whenever you're trying random things, you're just experimenting. I think one time my, my cousin told me a story where a thing my dad said changed his life where it was variety is the spice of life and that fits when it comes to this album too because you get to songs again eye to eye fall in line it has a heavier feel more straightforward just in your face pissed offness but you get songs like hallucination and shame in a basket they are much more drawn out they're much more operatic they're much more theater driven style songs where you're going to go through different acts you're going to go through different feels for it but it's going to allow the band especially from your perspective as creatives and us as fans to explore mushroom head even more what could still become of you guys after 30 plus years because if you're if you're the same thing for 30 30 years like 30 years over and over and over again that tends to just get stale and no one really wants to stick around because everyone changes. That's just the course of humanity. As artists, you have like, your influences change, your ideas change, your perceptions change. So you want to try different things. You want to bring new things to the sound. And on this album, especially with some of those longer songs, like Shame in a Basket, it's almost eight and a half minutes long. I mean, you did as it goes from, I think it's like act one, two, three. I think there's even a fourth one at the end of it where you're sitting at the end thinking, that was definitely a trip I went on. I'm not sure what kind of a trip I just went on, but wow. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You got it. And that's kind of what it's supposed to do. Open interpretation, you know, for the listener. And, the, and you know, it, it, that's the best way to get, I think, your art out instead of, like we said, it has to be a certain way and it has to fit a certain mold and it has to have a certain sound. Um, you know, we change tempos and keys and, all kinds of different things to where, you know, if you listen to one song, you can't absolutely say that the rest of the album is going to sound like that because you're guaranteed it's not. There may be some similarities, but, you know, for the most part, that's just the one on that album that sounds like that. So, uh, you know, again, I, I kind of blame that on our own ADD and part as artists to um, learn, get out of our comfort zones and find you know, things that we didn't know we could do, you know, like you said, you don't want to just make the same song over and over or the same album over and over or go in and I'm going to make the heaviest record I've ever made. And even if you do, OK, but after four songs of it, is it is it are you really getting anything out except that one purpose? I think there's so much more to say with art and the, the fact that there are no rules and people think there are. Uh, it, it, that's the biggest misconception I think people have about music and bands and art in general. There are no rules. And the more bands break the rules, the grander these sounds get, the grander these ideas get. And we get those yeah. bands that become those generational bands or artists that people remember from forever we get i mean take a look back in you know back in the 50s elvis just what he would do the sound he was bringing the style that was something completely different it was generational it was way out of the box then the british invasion comes in then you get stuff like zeppelin then hair metal in the 80s and metal yeah. new metal everything you can just go all the way through it it's bands that step out of those comfort zones, but also have the ADHD to just so focus in on what they're trying to do and expand that sound and just see where it can go. Those are the bands that really continue to just grow and continue to stay in the minds of fans and continue to make great music over and over and over again. And if you guys weren't making your ninth album around for 30 years, then you wouldn't fit in that category, but you have, so you do. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Here we are. And again, man, the more things change, the more they stay the same and, I'm super grateful for every day that I still get to make music and art for a living. Um, again, nine albums, it's, it's just crazy to look back and go, there's eight more of these, you know? <laughs> Sometimes it really hits you kind of heavy. Um, but in the on the you know flip side, it's 
you know, I'm not doing anything really different than I was when I was 22, when I started this whole thing and wake up every day and say, how can I pimp my band? You know, like, how can I get this thing out to more people? So literally that's just the expression we used to use when we were kids. And, uh, you know, that mentality never left the expressions changed, of course, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, that, yeah, again, it's just, you know, how can I create music and art and, and get it out there and, it's that's really just still the goal same same thing as you know same way i felt when i was 22 and that energy and mentality has not only allowed you to continue to do this for over half of your lifetime and my whole entire lifetime in that but it's going to allow you to continue to do this going forward for who knows how many more years another 10 20 even 30 depending upon how many how many years you really want to go into it because you're only 52 that's not very old in terms of you know the way people are living now hell Mick Jagger and Keith Richards are still out there playing I don't know how Keith Richards is still alive but he's still doing it so as long as you want to keep doing it there's certainly potential for it to happen yeah and there, you know with the way technology changes there's so many more things that are coming that you know that's going to be entertaining and other ways to craft this form of entertainment. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the future. Again, you don't know what's coming, so that, that's kind of exciting. I, I, I like it that way more than I than the predictability of life. And especially as things continue to change technology-wise and new ways of entertainment are being put out there, the fact that, especially as Mushroom Head, the band with the masks, everything around there, it allows for such this different aura and ability to create in ways that other bands can't. So the excitement behind creating what's going to become in the future to not only, as you said, pimp your band out other places, but to get more exposure and to get another brand new audience into the music and into the band and into the stuff that you love to create. The potential is absolutely there and the energy that you have is still there in order to be able to go out, grab that potential and make sure that you absolutely hit on it yeah absolutely i mean you, you definitely you nailed it right there you know it it, it is it, like part of it is the times too like the culture right now it, it's it's ready for this type of entertainment it, it's been brewing you know to where the subculture became pop culture and it's all kind of acceptable now you know you think 10 years ago you know cosplay conventions and mm -hmm. things like that even the ability to get the supplies to make those costumes and things i mean all of that stuff took off video games comic books movies all that the, all those worlds kind of came together and we kind of blend all that stuff together with with heavy metal a little bit too so like i said you know the opportunity and timing is is, is absolutely better than ever um in the climate of how acceptable you know heavy metal and this kind of entertainment is you know I, again i'm really excited for the future Oh, I'm excited for it too, to see what you do, not only with this album, not only with the band going forward, but creatively, what else can be added to Mushroom Head overall? Skinny, I got one more question because I know you got to get going. It's something I love to ask every band member, artist, person I bring on the podcast as a way for not only us to get to know more new music, but get to get into the music that you love. So Skinny, can you name me three bands or artists that you love that you would love to see more people get into? Um... Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Currently, I've been listening to Pussifer. Uh, the Money Shot album, I think, is incredible. Now, I've been a Tool fan forever. And to be honest with you, I think I fell for that stuff more than I did Tool. But <laughs> Pussifer, I don't know. I didn't listen to much years ago. And maybe I just wasn't in the mood or maybe wasn't ready for it or something. But I went back down. I gave it all a chance again. And, man, I have listened to that Money Shot record probably once a day for the last two or three months. I think it's absolutely incredible. So maybe I could, you know, say this, if there's an album that you didn't necessarily like, go give it another shot. Um, you know, there, there's a ton of them that happened to me. Like I was either a late bloomer with it, or I was like, I didn't like it just because I didn't think it was cool. I don't even know why I didn't like, but <laughs> you know, like I said, you go back and give something a shot. Um, I can't not ever say enough about Pink Floyd, the wall. Um, it, that album changed me as a person and it made me want to, especially the movie going with it, it made me want to create art with music combined. It, that one was definitely a, a big one on me. And, um, you know, you can't go wrong with me. S.O.D., the original S.O.D. album, man. I remember, God, I was 15, 14. I don't even know how old I was. But I, when it first came out, I got it on vinyl and I wore that thing out, man. <laughs> Stormtroopers of Death. I mean, go revisit that one, any old school guys and any of you younger guys who might have never listened to it. 
you'll be really surprised at who those people are and what they went on to do. And again, it's just a, a record, you know, it was part of the era. It sounds the way it sounds for a reason. It is what it is, but it's all that metalcore punk angst, everything that was happening when like I was a teenager. So go check out that SOD record. Oh, I think those are three great suggestions. So thanks, Kenny. I really appreciate it. Now I'm going to close up out with three things. First things first, when it comes to Mushroom Head, when it comes to the brand new album, Call the Devil, when it comes to finding them online, find along with them, getting concert tickets to any show near you, getting merch and streaming the new album. Description of the podcast below, it says find Mushroom Head online, links, labels for everything. So I got you covered. Make sure you go down and check them out, follow along, because you're not going to want to miss the future for this band. Now it's number two. Skinny, whenever guests in the podcast I enjoy having on, I tend to make a certain promise as a way to say thank you, and I wish to continue to support you in the future. So when you guys get to come and play Milwaukee, I believe it's on uh, October 20th, I'm tight with the venue that's there, so I'm going to try and find a way to find you, come and say hi, and make it in a promise of first rounds on me. Absolutely. That sounds wonderful. Make sure you do, man. I look forward to it. Oh, I will make it absolutely happen. And now it's time for number three. I cannot end this episode by saying goodbye because, Skinny, this was fantastic. I would love to have you back on again in the future, and I made you a promise, so this can't be goodbye, my friend. This is. I'll see you later. Right on. See you soon. Take care, brother. Well, folks, the interview with Skinny from the band Mushroom Head, and now it's time for Kevin's final thought. 30 years this band has been around. I mean, 31 years, I should say, honestly. They've been around longer than I've been alive. I'm 29 right now. I'm almost 30. Oh, God, that's really weird to say. But where I want to go with this is they're on nine albums. And it the, the energy that Skinny still has and the rest of the band still has to create songs that are going to get you going right in your face, like I'd Eye and Fall in Line, or songs that have a much more expansive nature that try new things like Hallucination and Shame in a Basket. What is going to happen is when you see this is you're going to see a band that still loves to make music, that still loves to create, that still loves to try new things and expand their sound while also expanding the lore that is the band. I mean, take a look at this. They've been wearing masks for 30 years and Skinny was absolutely right. Cosplay has become a much bigger thing in the last 10 years. Video games, anime, anything around that fantasy, being able to dress up as a favorite character as a favorite thing and go out in public and be a part of the culture is much more readily acceptable in a band like Mushroom Head, who not only takes that and has had that for so long, but also is a classic band in terms of metal and I mean, I'm saying class because they've been around for over 30 plus years, but especially in the lore that is now, they're able to potentially take that and really run with it further in a brand new scheme of things. The way that we have online differentiations with TikTok, Instagram, whatever it could be. It's just online differentiations. Man, I'm starting to sound old. Yikes. But you get where I'm going with this. There's plenty of life left in the tank for Mushroom Head. And it's like with this brand new album, given the fact that we're on the other side of the pandemic since their previous one, and there's so much energy still behind them, Mushroom Head could really make a real big run even late in their career. I should say maybe the middle of their career. I mean, they could be still doing this at 82. They could be like Keith Richards and Mick Jagger. It could happen. So on that note, I want to thank Skinny for coming on the podcast today. If you want to follow along with Mushroom Head, go to the podcast below where it says find Mushroom Head online. Links and labels are there for everything. Uh, social media wise, YouTube wise, where you can find them online, buy some merch, stream the album, pre-order the album. And of course, see them on tour in the U S in October, the pond of burning body. And there is no us and mine incision along with them being out in Europe in August to support the album. Also go to description of the podcast below where we are. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hit subscribe right down here to subscribe to the podcast. You're going to follow on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. New episodes every single Tuesday and Thursday. I want to thank Skinny for coming on. Dude, looking forward to seeing you in October. On that note, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching listening to the Cold Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin. And you guys know how I end every single one. That was a big, healthy, and hearty. See ya! Yeah.